There is a huge reason why I am constantly talking about data privacy. We have so little of it online, and there are two major threats that we constantly have to consider. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, you have to die. I speak from a unique perspective here on my channel, where I used to work on a hacker YouTube channel. So I learned how to use all the tools that a regular malicious actor would use, but I have also learned what to look for to spot bad data management from websites that we use every single day. This episode is sponsored by Delete Me, and I'll be sharing the steps that I've used to protect my data for years. But let's go ahead and start with a not so far-fetched story in a galaxy, well, very close to here on Earth. Every single time you log into guest Wi-Fi at a hospital, an airport, a plane, a hotel, a coffee shop, a school, a store, pretty much anywhere, well, a malicious actor could be logged into that same Wi-Fi. They can use free software to collect and create an entire profile about you based on sites you visit, unencrypted messages that you might send, and the devices that you are logging into. If even one site or app that you you use has poorly built code on the back end, they could be leaking your plain text password or information. This sounds kind of like a storyline from Mr. Robot, but it's actually not. Everything in that theoretical storyline is very real. For years, I have made videos about how to protect your data, but I see questions, especially from folks new to this thought process, about why does an attacker or a hacker want my data? What exactly is personally identifiable information? information or PII. What does a hacker do with it? How do they find it? So why does an attacker want your data? Well, it could be for financial gain or just for clout. Maybe they are just bored or they have a bone to pick with you. There's plenty of reasons. And in most cases involving a stranger, it's just to steal your money, financial gain. The end goal is to steal what money you have or trick you into sending it to them via a scam. In the case of personally identifiable information or PII for sure, that's what I'll call it in this video, there are two subjects that want your data. There's the fictitious or not so fictitious malicious actor at a coffee shop. But there's also social media applications and software services that we use every single day that collect your data. Apps and platforms may be free to use. They either show you a ton of ads or they collect your data and sell it to third parties or they do both of those things at the same time. This is how they generate revenue and this is how they run their businesses. Sometimes they collect so much data on you that they can then show you targeted ads across all the different applications that you use. Then those advertisers make more money, which is then paid to the apps in the platform so that they can distribute even more ads and show those to you. It's a vicious cycle in which we are constantly the product. Lots of advertisers and platforms buy your data or scrape it from publicly accessible websites like social media or data brokers. If you have Googled yourself, the sites that pop up with a listing showing your personal data, those are data brokers. They love your data because they can charge people a few bucks to access it. Then they have ads on their site, which also pay out. And then they can resell the data to third parties. And your data is a treasure trove for marketing. And then we have the hackers. Well, they can collect your PII data to steal your identity in identity theft and fraud rings, which make up a huge loss for people of 16 billion, yes, that's with a B, dollars per year, at least and it's growing. I am never gonna financially recover from this. They could also sell your private data to sketchy people on the deep web websites or forums, or they could use it to blackmail you or attack your devices with ransomware. Attackers can find your data via local or remote targeted attacks. They can use phishing schemes or scams. They can be siphoning data from social media sites or simply buying it from data brokers. Hmm. Okay, so what is that PII situation? Well, this is data that can be used to create a profile about you and to further steal your identity. It's the kind of data that can be used to commit fraud. So that could be as simple as your full name and your email address or more personal information like your home address, your phone number, or your social security number and driver's license numbers, your place of birth, your previous addresses, date of birth, mom's maiden name, all that info 
info could be added to that list. And it is definitely not hard for an attacker to use any little bit of this info to impersonate you. By using data that is readily available on social media, purchasing data from data brokers, or using tricks to fish data from you, an attacker could answer security questions that you have entered, reset passwords, and log into your accounts. Whenever you forget your password, what do you do? Well, you might have a code or a link sent to your email address. You have to answer security questions, or you call customer service and give them your date of birth and your last name or the last four of your SSN. All of those little bits of data seem kind of unobtrusive and not to worry about on their own, but you put those things together and it solves the puzzle of who you are. From here, an attacker could clone your SIM, giving them access to any security codes that get sent to you via text, leading to logins. They could change the email address associated with your online accounts. It all sounds really scary, but this is why we need to take four steps to protect ourselves online, because we have no guarantee that we are safe and we cannot depend on social media to keep our data private. It's this holistic approach to data privacy, not just a one and done thing that you do once and then forget about forever. So first, you need to know how to remove or change your PII. Now, something a lot of people don't actually realize is you can remove a lot of PII from social media sites by simply deleting older posts or changing your profile data or quite simply making things up. Old social media posts might have personally identifiable information in them, so deleting those from your profile can help with privacy, of course. For your profile, you don't actually have to put your real date of birth on Facebook, for example. You don't have to answer security questions truthfully. My first pet's name is not whatever this is, but that's the security answer I input whenever I need to do so. This is an example that's not actually the security answer that I use. This is a fake answer that I'm using for this example. Now, inputting fake data and giving up as little data as possible is a huge first step because then other people can't guess your data. But the problem is if your data is already on the internet, it's probably been leaked or sold or bought over and over by attackers, social media sites, advertisers, and data brokers. So while you are cleansing the web of your current data, you also need to find a way to remove it from the sites and the profiles that you don't own. So this is where Delete Me comes into play. I have been on the internet long before Facebook was a thing, long before MySpace was a thing, so a lot of my own data was already public. Being sold or shared without my consent, probably from some of the retailers that I bought from online stores, and it's just popping up on data broker sites. Now, since I use Delete Me, of which I signed up as a paying customer years ago, their service acts as an online privacy assistant. So they dig through a huge amount of data brokers. There's a huge list on their website to find and remove my data. They do quarterly checks for my data. They send the opt out request for me and they send me reports every quarter so I can see exactly which data brokers had my data and where they were able to delete it from. My special delete me deal, which is just for my viewers, also snags you a really sweet discount on the service. You can hit up joindeletemecom slash morse code for 20% off any consumer plans. By using Delete Me and also scrubbing data from my social media pages, retail profiles, and other sites, I'm giving data brokers less data to share about me, which in turn also gives hackers less data to work with if I am being targeted. Now, I won't deep dive into the details on the second tip that I wanted to go over since I've done multiple videos about this topic and you can find a whole playlist on my channel about this, but using a password manager to ensure Ensure that you aren't reusing your passwords across the web and setting up multi-factor authentication or pass keys are both great advances in technology that we could take advantage of that help us better protect our data. And number three is segmentation. Now you probably have one email address and one phone number. That's what most normal people do. But why not create a second private and secure email address and phone number? One that you only use for banking and bills and financial profile access. The old email address can be used for things like newsletters or shopping sites, your business card, etc, etc. The email address on my website, the one that I give companies that I work with to retailers or what's on my business card. <laughs> yeah, it's not the same one that I use for my bank. I know that retailers 
for example, sell my data to other companies for marketing. And it's pretty obvious whenever you get some random like retailer magazine in the mail that is oddly similar to one retailer that you've actually purchased from, but you've never purchased from this other one, somebody is selling your data somewhere. Now you could even take a step further and you could use online products to anonymize your email address, your credit card number, and other data whenever you are using them online. Now I've recommended signing up for haveibeenpwned.com for many years, long before I started even this channel, as a good resource to get notified if your email address ever gets leaked. Have I Been Pwned checks if your email address is a part of any data breaches that pop up on the web, and it automatically sends you a notification alerting you of this. And lastly, and this is so important, practicing good security hygiene can lead to a more private experience online. Both of those things work together, but it has to be something that you practice every single day. See, your data is valuable to people and companies who want to use it without your consent. The more you pay attention to what data you put on the web and the more you use sites like Delete Me and Have I Been Pwned to get notified of leaks and help you with scrubbing data from the web, over time this creates a more private coexistence with the technology that we use today. We are in a really major time of change. It is a time of AI, major advances in machine learning, so we need to do whatever we can to protect ourselves too.